So we've learned how to organize and make graphs for discrete data. Now we want to learn how to organize and make graphs for continuous data. Now it's a little bit of a cheat. So continuous data are data that could have decimals. But we also do these same techniques for discrete data when there's a lot of values. Um, for example, money. So money stops at the hundredths place, right, for the cent, for the penny. Um, but even though it's technically discrete, we don't ever treat it like it's discrete. We would always put it in a table and treat it like it's continuous because it does take on decimal values. So it's annoying to work with it as a discrete thing. Or just take on a lot of values as in there's a huge range. And so it's just easier to put things into groups, which we call classes. If you remember, we've seen that definition before. So the classes are the bins. And then in each bin, there'll be a lower class limit and upper class limit. So remember, recall, the classes is the same thing as the bins. I, think, I always think of like plastic tubs into which you shove things in it like Ikea or something like that. So the classes are the bins. There's a lower class limit and an upper class limit. The lower class limit is the smallest value within the class. Upper class limit is the largest value within the class. Now, because it's continuous data, we always round it. So that means that we can round to um, the nearest whole number, that's pretty common, or we'll end it in 0 0.9 or 0.99 or 0.999. Um, I will say or whole numbers. That does sometimes happen as well. All right, they'll round with no decimals. So if you look down here below, you can see these classes are ending in 0 0.9. See, 49.9, 59.9. And technically, that wasn't even really possible for this data set. So we could end them in 49 or 59 or 69 and so on. Now, the class width is the difference in lower class limits. Technically, you can do it as the difference in upper class limits as well. Um, we'll see. Now, not all distributions have an even class width that's the same throughout just as a warning to you so i'll make a little i'll make a little warning down below and an open-ended distribution is what this particular example is you can have it on the lower end with no class lower limit right see how this first class just says everything below 39. you don't know if you know was there a 20 was there a 15 you don't know right so that's open-ended same thing down here, everything above 90. So you don't know what the highest value is, which is actually the answer to this question right here, G, because the upper class or the last class in this table is open-ended. So you can have be open-ended on the, on the low side, open-ended on the high side, or both. So that's why there's an or in there, because it could happen either way. And we'll just make a note, not all tables, I guess it's more of a warning, not all tables um, or distributions have an equal class width. Distributions have a consistent, I guess I should say. Now, the ones I'm making in the notes generally do, um, but real life sometimes gets messy. Um, age, for example, is one that is often not equal. They'll usually do like teenagers or say 16 to 21, and then they'll do 22 to 30. They, they'll make them different widths for different reasons. So they have reasons for what they're doing, but um, not all distributions have a consistent class width. So that's just a warning to you. All right. So let's look at this example because all these definitions will, will kind of hopefully solidify a little bit when we look at it. These are the actual grade distributions for seven sections of Math 133 from 2018. These are the final exam percentage grades. So seven sections worth of students, and there we have it. So seven sections worth of students, and these were their grade distributions for the final exam. All right, now the first thing they want us to do is state the third class. Okay, so this is the first class right here, first. This is the second class right here. So the third class is this one right here, which is 50 to 59.9. All right, now what about the second class's lower class limit? So the second class is this one, 40 to 49. So the lower class limit would be 40. Now the sixth class is upper class limit. Let's see here. Here's the fourth. Here's the fifth. Here's the sixth class. So the sixth class's upper class limit is 89 or 89.9 or 89.99999, right? that number. So we'll generally write whatever they write here. So we would say 89.9. .9. But in your head, realize there could be more decimal places or less decimal places based on how they chose to round this time. But it's that number right there. 
Now the class width, you'll notice here it actually is consistent. And you can tell, look at those lower class limits, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. They are all 10 apart, right? So the lower class limit is the difference in consecutive lower class limits. Read what it says. Difference, meaning you subtract. Consecutive means one right after the other. Lower class limits. So you take any two lower class limits that are consecutive. So I just chose 50 and 60, but there's nothing magical about them. I could have picked 40 and 50, 60 and 70, 70 and 80. It doesn't make any difference. So I would take 60 minus 50 and I would have 10. Now remember, if it's, say, 10 for part of the, the table, and then you can check that it's 5 later on, then so be it. You have a class width of 10 for the first part of the table, and maybe 5 for the second part of the table. That, that happens, especially with things like age, um, say for census data or something like that, because there are reasons, demographically and culturally speaking, why we separate out teenagers, for example, or 20-somethings. All right, what was the modal class? Now the modal mode, you've seen that word before, it's really going to be talked about in section 3.1, but it means the most frequent, right? Which class has the most frequent um, values, which in this case is 80 to 89.9. See, because it has the highest frequency. Now it's not the frequency that you write. It's not 45. 45 is why it's happening. But the class itself is 80 to 89.9. So that's the answer. It's 80 to 89.9. That is the most frequent class. So does the modal class, also known as the mode, right? It's the class that is the mode. All right, to pass the final exam, a student needs to score 70% or higher. What percent of students pass this exam? Hmm. Okay, so 70% or higher is these three groups right here, right? So these three are all the people that scored 70% or higher. So we need to add these three up. Okay, well, I'm going to need a calculator for that. So let me grab my calculator. So 32 plus 45 plus 34. Enter. All right, so that is 101. All right, so, oh, let me just say what I'm doing here really quick before I write that number. It's the number that are over 75% or 70% 70, 70 sorry, divided by the total number of students. Sorry, I'm old, so that symbol means number to me. It does not mean hashtag, <laughs> like on Twitter. I mean, it does mean hashtag, but that's different. All right, so we just counted, and we found that this was 101, or 111, excuse me. And now we want to find the total. So I want to add up this whole column and get the total down here of all the students. Okay, so I will grab my calculator, and I will type 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 25 plus 32 plus 45 plus plus 34. I almost pressed the wrong button, right? Because those are the frequencies right there. And I get 165 total. So the sum here is 165. So I take 111, I divide by 165, and we get 67.3%. So 67.3%, which is most students, pass that final exam out of these seven sections. All right, now why can't we be sure if any student received 100%? Well, because I already mentioned this, this last class is open-ended. Because it's open-ended, we don't actually know what any of these 34 students received. Right? So because the above 90 is an open-ended class, and even if it wasn't, honestly, we don't even know how many of these 45 got 80. We have no idea. Um, but is open-ended, we don't know how many students got any particular score. It's nothing special about 100. That's the problem with binning. When you put things into bins and groups like this, that's another way to say that um, classes, you could say groups, right? You're grouping. 
So when you put things into groups like this, you lose the ability to know what any of the particular scores were. We don't know what any students received <laughs> on any particular score. We just know in general what groups they're in, right? Including 100. 100 is especially bad because this is open-ended, but honestly, any of these classes makes no difference, right? I, these 32 students, were they all at 70? Were they all at 75? We don't know. We have no way of knowing, right? That's the problem with grouping. I'll make a note of it. When you group data like this, you lose the ability to know what any particular score or value was, which is a problem sometimes. All right, now one last comment, which is if you want to make this class yourself, actually this should be at the the, sorry, this should be at the top of the next page. So I'm actually going to pause right here and I will put that at the top of the next page for future. Sorry, that's a typo. I'll fix it for later semesters. <laughs>